Hey y'all, it's Courtney here, and today's video is all about warming up, stretching, and with a decent segment on foam rolling, mostly because there's a lot of misinformation about there, uh, out there about what foam rolling does. So just to kick it off, warming up, what is it? It's a series of movements that you go through in order to increase blood flow to your muscles, to increase your core body temperature, um, increase your range of motion and flexibility. It's basically a, a way that we prime our muscles for any sort of movement that we're about to do. They're, they tend to be sport specific, so, so warm-ups for power lifters are gonna be a little bit different than for endurance runners or distance runners or whatever, but overall it's the same idea. You're trying to increase performance while decreasing injuries. Um, so there's different types of warming up. A lot of us who are a little bit older, like my age, probably remember in PE we did static stretches. Um, if you played any sort of sport in elementary school, you did static stretches. That's the one where you all stand in a circle and someone's like, one, two, three, one, two. So that's static stretching. Now that's really fallen out of favor in, um, for a lot of reasons, mostly because it's not as efficient, it's not as great as dynamic stretching. Dynamic stretching or dynamic warm-ups are going to be things where you're having movement in order to warm up. This can be anything from like walking lunges to body weight squats. Um, I'm gonna link a few different videos below that I really like. They're both by, one's by Meg squats and the other ones by Katie Ann, um, but they're really good warm-ups that show what a dynamic warm-up looks like. And there's been plenty of studies that have shown that dynamic warm-ups are more efficient um, and they're just overall better than static stretching. So those are some things to try and incorporate into your warm-up routine. Now, foam rolling. A lot of people have a love-hate relationship with foam rolling, and I think it's because there's a lot of misconceptions about what foam rolling does. First of all, I've heard a lot of people say that foam rolling will break up the lactic acid in your muscles that cause DOMS, or delayed onset muscle soreness. This is wrong for quite a few reasons. One, DOMS are not caused by a buildup of lactic acid. This is a theory that's been widely rejected from the community. And by community, I mean people who do actual studies and research on this. For some reason, the fitness industry likes to hold on to this. I don't really know why. But the theories that are a little bit more prevalent now is it's micro tears in the muscle, and before people freak out, that's how you build muscle is those little micro tears that you create when you're lifting, um, or some inflammation or inflammatory processes that are causing the soreness. So if you're foam rolling because you're breaking up the lactic acid to decrease your DOMS, you're not foam rolling for the right reason. Um, the other part of that equation that doesn't quite make sense is the idea that doing this manual manipulation, meaning foam rolling, lacrosse balls, art, Graston, anything else that is manually manipulating your muscles to try and break up anything or release anything is a flawed theory. They've actually done studies and it takes something like 900 to 600 kilograms. And for those of us who, are, uh, who do things in pounds, basically double that and some change, that's how much weight you'll need to make meaningful changes in your fascia or basically what people are saying you're manipulating. Um, I convert that to Newtons, but I don't think that's gonna help the average listener or viewer any more than if I just said how much weight it would take. Basically what it means is in order to have meaningful changes in the muscle itself or in the fascia, you would need an extreme amount of energy, force, weight, and that's just not something you're getting out of a foam roller. Um, I've got a lot of studies that I've linked below. I've also linked an article that I wrote below that has a lot of links to other studies that show by far and away that you're not actually manipulating or releasing anything and that a release is not something that actually really exists. Now, why do people foam roll? It does increase your range of motion acutely and by acutely i mean if you foam roll an area and then do an exercise with that area so say you have tight glutes for example it's very very common and you foam roll your glutes and then you do things like lunges you're going to find that your range of motion from foam rolling is going to increase from what it was before 
But that's the same with any sort of warm up that you do. As long as you're warming up, you're increasing your range of motion. Now, when I said acutely, what I'm basically saying is if you foam roll on your off days in order to increase your mobility and all you do is foam roll, you're not going to see any changes long term. So chronic changes in range of motion. Um, so people who are like, man, I should really foam roll more on my days off it's not gonna cause this long-term effect that most people think it causes. Um, what's really important is if you're foam rolling and then performing a mobility exercise. So that acute change in your range of motion to increase your range of motion through an exercise is gonna carry over into the exercise that you perform and that exercise is gonna cause the chronic or the long-term changes in your range of motion. So it's not that foam rolling doesn't have a place when it comes to your mobility, it's just not something you should spend 40 minutes doing on your off days with this hope that you're gonna suddenly be more mobile, have better depth in your squats, or whatever else you need. And there is some studies that show that it does decrease DOMS, that delayed onset muscle soreness. Since DOMS aren't really well understood, you know, we have theories that we've rejected, but we don't have one wide theory that we've accepted. Um, the jury is really still out on why this works. There's some who say that it's a placebo effect because there really isn't any changes in the muscle pre or post, um, and that we already know that to really manipulate fascia, you need a lot of force which you don't get from the foam roller. The other thing is, you know, they've, they've done plenty of studies who've said that there may be some neuro, neurophysiological changes that occur that make it so that you, you know, are having that decrease in pain. The last thing, which I think is something that we should be really cautious of in the future, is the idea that you're stimulating nociceptive receptors or, or your pain receptors in such a way that you don't really feel the pain anymore. Um, I have found some case studies of people who have, you know, pain at the bottom of their foot, for example, and they go see someone who says, oh, it's because your hamstrings and your calves are tight. So they really go in there and do some deep body work to break up the issues um, in their calves and their hamstrings. And that particular person was left with way more pain than they started for before. And that's because they stimulated their CNS so much that they actually increased their overall stimuli and are now more painful than they were before. It doesn't always happen. It's based on very individual you know, responses to this manipulation. And to think that foam rolling an area that's excruciatingly painful over and over again um, may possibly cause this, it's a possibility. We can't completely rule that out. So if you don't enjoy foam rolling, don't do it. Just warm up the same way as someone else. If you feel like you're getting meaningful benefits from foam rolling, there's no reason to stop. If it's part of your routine, keep doing it. You know, I'm, I'm always a proponent of just doing what works best for you. Just as long as you understand why you're doing it and not saying things like lactic acid breakup or that you're causing long-term changes in your mobility. Um, they're all acute changes. And as always, if you have any questions, just leave them below. Um, I'm going to link a bunch of the studies below and then some of those mobility workout videos because there are so many good ones it seems silly for me to make yet another one when I can just link some really great ones. See you guys in the next video.